Let's take a look at the currencies in Forex. Focus Mario Singh joins us, Director of Training and Education at FXPrimus.com. Still with us also our guest hosts, Don Luskin from Trend Macrolytics and Christian Menegati, Rubini Global Economics over in the Big Apple. Mario, good to see you. Uh, good morning. Welcome and happy holidays. Uh, the dollar got uh, hit pretty hard overnight. Uh, I guess part of it was uh, that final seven-year uh, auction of seven-year paper, which went uh, surprisingly uh, well. More notably, though, uh, on the upside, Australian dollar post float high and yen higher at the same time. That's sort of a strange pairing. What's going on there? Well, let's, let's really just take a cue from what's happening in the U.S. dollar. Over the last few months, we have seen it losing ground against the commodity currencies. We are seeing it losing ground against the yen and the Swiss franc. But at the same time, it's gaining ground on the euro and the sterling. So really, it's on, in, in, in kind of like two shoes in this, in this uh, mm. instance now, the U.S. dollar. But I still see it losing ground heading towards 2011. We see the January effect when risk is on. We're going to be seeing a lot of investors plowing into the commodity currencies like the Aussie, which is already at all-time highs. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that's an interesting uh, correlation because, I mean, the last time uh, we saw more tonight, tightening measures from China, the Australian dollar really did suffer uh, in that intraday trading pattern. Uh, since then, it has accelerated to fresh record highs practically. It's I mean, shrugged it, it off and kept on going, yeah. Absolutely. Why is that? Now, the, the key thing is this. We, we're looking at a huge correlation now between the Aussie and, and, and China. So whenever China has great numbers, we see the Aussie taking off. Now, what really happened there when China hiked up basis points, 25 basis points, essentially, for all their lending rates, what is essentially the markets telling us is that traders are just shrugging that off, that China is just not doing enough for them to contain the inflation, which was already at record highs at 5.1%. Okay, let's talk uh, a dollar and uh, the Chinese currency RMB and get back to Don. We've got... Uh, Hu Jintao visiting Washington uh, just next month uh, and talking to, the, uh, talking to the president. Ahead of that, we've seen the Chinese currency, uh, every fixing we've seen the last five, six sessions or so, it's gotten higher and higher and, and higher. This is, I mean, the timing probably is not uh, a coincidence, you think? Well, this is, I mean, I'd love to have Mario weigh in on this because this is, like, to me, a great mystery. It's now been six months since China agreed to start revaluing the RMB versus the dollar. And cumulatively over those six months, it's been less than 3%. It's a joke. They're, they were doing it to head off protectionist pr pressures in the U.S. Congress. Those pressures have hardly uh, subsided. We had a vote in the House before the last election where more Republicans voted for protectionism than against it, so Republican Congress is no relief. What are the Chinese thinking? Why are they bothering with interest rates? Why aren't they adjusting the exchange rate? Okay, why aren't they adjusting the exchange rate? Well, the key thing is it's really all about geopolitics right now. They've got to understand their role in, 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 the, in the whole world stage. Currently, China is in that transition where they've got to weigh in of increasing imports. They've got to weigh in in terms of increasing their domestic consumption. At the same time, what is really pulling China's uh, uh, GDP across is really their export sector. So they are in that phase where they've got to understand how to increase and decrease imports and exports at the same time. U.S. at, at, at the same time is always breathing down on China's neck. Come on, guys you've got to really decrease your trade surplus. Mm -hmm. Christian, you weigh in on this? I mean, uh, uh, one thing to consider, of course, part of the reason potentially why China doesn't allow fast appreciation in the yuan is the fact that, let's face it, the bulk of the exporters in China uh, operate on very, very low margins. So it's very difficult, I would imagine, for the central bank to allow the fast appreciation until we see the structural changes uh, in the Chinese economy. Would you agree? Well, Clearly, right, that's the official explanation. I mean, not official explanation, but that's one of the reasons, right, why they don't want to allow faster appreciation. The other thing that we have to take into account, and that's a bit of a chicken-egg uh, game, uh, is the fact that inflation has been uh, rising quite substantially, right? So in real terms, the exchange rate has actually appreciated um, a little bit more than just that 3%. Nevertheless, I do completely agree with Don on the fact that uh, they need to let that currency appreciate and become a little bit stronger. That will help also um, strengthen and it private demand, uh, consumers' demand in China, because it will increase yeah. the purchasing power of, uh, of Chinese consumers. Um, yeah. You know, another important point, right, and going back to the fact that they are pegging to, the, to, to a basket right now, I like to say that now they are not just pegging to the dollar, but they are also pegging to the euro, right? <laughs> 
Interesting yeah, stuff. That, yeah, go that ahead. That's the thing. I mean, you know, they're, they're pegging their currency to a basket of currencies. So uh, if we continue to see, let's say, for instance, a uh, consistent weakness in the European economy, and by that mean the extension, of course, the euro, uh, then that doesn't mean that it's a foregone conclusion that the yuan is going to continue to rise or accelerate because, uh, you know, they've got that uh, out clause and say, well, we're, we're pegging to a basket of currency. We see our weighting increase in euro. Well, then the yuan can potentially devalue, more, not, not appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. And again, you know, it's the export side of things, uh, of the economy that drives everything, right? So the, China actually exports more to Europe than, than to the United States, right? So, uh, you know, clearly they have an eye on both currencies. That the, 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 the composition of the basket is not, uh, is not well known. It's not, there's not transparency around that. So, you know, there's still a lot of work to do around, uh, around Chinese right. currency policy. All right, Don, come in on this. Well, look, I, I guess the thing that I just don't understand is if you're China, you're competing in a global marketplace for all kinds of resources that are priced in dollars. You want copper. You want oil. You know, why don't you want to make your currency more valuable so you can get more of those essential things that you want? You know, and I, I get this export story, but between 2005 and 2008, they revalued the RMB by 30 percent. That didn't stop their exports. They went up during that period. This so th this just this doesn't make true. sense. What's wrong this with This is true. Yeah, yeah. I, I, go figure there. Listen, we, we're just getting this breaking over the wires. This is from a Chinese central bank official saying that small gradual appreciation of the yuan or the renminbi will have more positive than negative impact on China economy. This, this is headline speak, uh, uh, of course. I mean, this is something that you would expect them to say. Uh, a mild concession to the U.S. Yeah, we get it. We, we know you want us uh, to let the renminbi uh, rise faster, but small and gradual and what's unwritten, I guess, is at our own timing, at our own pace. Uh, Don, what do you think? Well, let's not forget, China is now one of the world's largest economies. They've been around for thousands and thousands of years. They invented gunpowder, for goodness sake. They've got lots of pride. The last thing they need is some sleazeball congressman in the U.S. telling them how to manage their currency. On the other hand, it is in their own advantage to revalue the RMB because they've got an inflation problem. They are importing our easy monetary policy, which makes sense for us with an unemployment rate of 10%, but it doesn't make sense for them with a GDP growth rate of 10%. They've got to get real and do something about this. <laughs> this is true. Never thought of the, uh, about that way. Listen, uh, we got to go. Mario, great to talk to you. Happy holidays. We'll see you bright and early next year, I hope. Thank you. Okay, see you then. Mario Singh there uh, from FXPrimus.com. And we've got a lot more ahead with uh, Christian Menegati, Rubini Global Economics, and also Don Luskin, Trend Macrolytics in just a while.